Bye, Cape Town. Bye. doing playing with sticks <laughs> rigging the cross deck um, they are they called jack lines jack lines Woo! from the starboard side to the port side up through the bow and then back down to the port side to starboard side nice uh, dave is helping b put on the beach wheels for our dinghy, which is gonna make our future life so much easier. But it is surprisingly time consuming. So they recommend you do one hole at a time and there's a good reason because it's amazing how a little shift can mess it up. But we only have one screw left, so getting close. Big wheels keep on turning. <laughs> getting ready for passage. Look at all this toilet paper. Does that mean we're full of shit or do we have a shitty crew? <laughs> I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> we'll tell you at the end of the trip. <laughs> so when we take the filter casing off, there's no gasket in here. There's no gasket along here or up in here. So that doesn't create the right seal. So when we end up turning on the water flow, it just sprays everywhere. Yeah, no, exactly. This one, this is the last one? Yeah. He's pulling that, let him push it in further. We're on. We're on. Congratulations on the christening of Hokulea. This boat. Hmm? Ah, oh, shit. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the wrong boat. Craig, Craig. Do we call this take three? Where's the camera? <laughs> Listen, you got a you got an NBC <laughs> cameraman here. I love the call. And I haven't had anything to drink yet. Yeah, that's right. There we go. Take two. Take two. <laughs> Congratulations on the hokening. <laughs> 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 Take three. Uh, I'm still the drink. Still. It's going to be the bloopers of this. Okay. Congratulations <laughs> on the christening of GTFO. If ever there was a boat that deserved a bottle of Southern Comfort, GTFO is it. Yeah! Well done, Take three. Thank you. We would like to thank everybody for showing up. We appreciate this opportunity to properly christen our boat because the next sail that she will do is going from here straight to St. Helena, God willing, there are winds following seas. Uh, but I know for us, it's kind of a culmination of many, many years to, <laughs> to put this together uh, because we've always had this GTFO and it, exactly what you think it is to get the fuck out plan and to be retired early and to explore the world and to see and meet wonderful new people. And so we, like I said, we thank you for being here for us and yeah, we hope to see everybody, you know, at some point in time somewhere out in the world. Um, but it's been a long time coming. Oh! Yay! Thank you. <laughs> you have to give a better kiss than that, man. <laughs> Goodbye to the other balance owners. Yeah, we're leaving.
so today we are practicing these uh, tethers on the jack lines. In case it's bad weather, we have to go forward on the bow. So that way at night. we all know, we all come second nature to us as we have to go forward. So we'll walk through uh, what it is to leave the cockpit, go forward, uh, and come back and make sure everyone understands how the uh, tether system works. As part of our regular maintenance, one of the things you need to check is your C-strainers. And what the C-strainers do is they are followed in the tubing line shortly after the through hole, and they kind of collect all the big gunks and chunks of stuff so it doesn't get into the pumps and, and ruin them. Uh, and you can take a quick look here. This is the freshwater pump um, strainer. It's got a bunch of crud in it. Oh, it sure does. But, so I'm going to clean that one out. But specifically, I'm going to check the uh, water maker strainer which is this one right here oh, see. see it's kind of cruddy but the first thing I have to do is sorry, is close the through hole the through hole so that no you know water doesn't continue to come in when I open that so that should then help with our efficiency of our water maker Need another towel. Another towel? Okay. <laughs> oh, it stinks. Pew. It does. Note to selves, we need to have a couple more towels when we do this uh, emptying of strainers. A little wet down there. Boop! <laughs> so we're cleaning the strainer here. There was a lot of gunk in it. And then we're going to put that back down in the water maker area. We're going to make water now that we've cleaned out the strainers. And every time I sit all the way down and forget, the first thing you need to do is turn on the fuse. So, bam. Following the instructions, make sure the inlet's open. We were just there. We know the through hole's open. Turn the product on sample. We're not going to sample, we sampled last time, um, or a couple of times ago. Turn the feed pump to run. Right here, run. And then we turn this on here. And we watch the pressure, because sometimes there's air bubbles. So if there's only one run running, it should go to about 75. Why is it not doing something? It's good. Pressure's got to build up. It's got to build up? Okay. And how would you relieve the pressure? And if there's too much pressure, we relieve it by doing this switch here, turning this. All right, so when I flip this switch on, after having wiggled this connector, you get this kind of a sound. Anything. You have to take the rubber off. Uh, all right, hold that chicken dinner. This is our first dinner aboard GTFO Yay. on our passage at sea. At sea. Oh, of course. Cheers. 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 I want you to get the green splat flash because your eyes are like burned out. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
it is it is a mental adjustment. That's when the green flash is. It's your brain. Okay, here it comes. Should green we be flag. naked eye or with sunglasses? I don't know. I'm going naked eye. Okay, I'll go sunglasses. Let's see if my people. Another thing I want to point out, which is new learning for me, is if you see this float switch, which if you turn on, runs the build pump. There's no water, so it's not doing anything. That's the low water float switch. But if you look over here, um, down around here, that blue, that's your high water float switch right there. And so, that should only run if you have really high water. We have noticed our steering wheel is not moving that much, even though we can hear the autopilot working. As you can see, the pulleys are doing their thing. But if you notice, this one has a lot of slack. See? So we're thinking that's a problem. And that one is associated with this one. So I think what we need to do is loosen all these half hitches, tighten it up, and then snug it up and get it tighter. No, just this one. This is the only one that's loose, and this is corresponding to the other equal one. And this is where it's going to get crazy. I was just saying I wish I didn't have my nails cut so short, <laughs> because these last ones are getting really tight. <laughs> I might have more now that... Then you know, let me try. Yeah, if you can undo this last half hitch. There. Ah, oh, you got it. Ah, steamwork, whoop, whoop. man. You you really loosened it. It's like when he opens a jar. Oh yeah. You've already loosened I it. I loosened it for you. Yeah. It's fine. Right. <laughs> right. Under pressure. How's that? Okay, so I'm pulling this through. And now I'm going to try to pull it down. This is where we probably need, like that? Yeah. And then start half hitching, right? Oh, you're losing it all. Ah! <laughs> Fuckers. There. Bam! We did it. We did. What you doing, George? <coughs> Holding the wheel steady. Why? Because the steering linkage is loose and needs to be tightened. Awesome. Good job. Yeah, good work. <laughs> Ladies are doing all the work. We got one tightened already. As Ann mentioned, we noticed that the helm wheel was very loose, not very responsive. Even though everything was working, and then as we saw, she had a lot of, there was a lot of slack in the lines here. So she and Michelle are down there tightening these up. So hopefully that'll make the steering wheel much more responsive uh, because this Dyneema will stretch after a while. We've had other owners tell us stories of uh, the, the, the cabling jumping the, jump the grooves uh, and they losing their, their auto helm and their steering capability. So hopefully, you know, knock on wood that we are being preventative more so than anything. When I turn the wheel, the chain moves accordingly, which implies that the chain and the wheel are still connected. However, right down through there is the shaft that connects the chain and goes to the steering system, but that I do not see any rotation. So with that in here, something has sheared or broken off. So got some guidance from balance. Seems that this shaft might be working its way out. Um, so I took this and see. That shaft is actually going back in. trick is how do I keep that from coming back out we just checked it up top and we do have helm control again uh, we tested it so we are somewhat back in action and you can even see right here how this piece has come out even more
but by thumping this side with the hammer, it pushes this back in and exposes some threads here. But the problem is that we didn't have locking nuts. So talking with balance, they suggested uh, borrowing some uh, nuts from elsewhere on the boat. And I pulled these from the engine compartment on one of the anodes uh, and it works. Now, ideally you should have two, but I'll have to monitor that and see how that goes. But hopefully that's at least a temporary fix so that we still have the ability to manually steer the boat. Here. Oh, I see the smooch. Is the key, is the pendant up or down? The pin goes through. Yeah. The drop tank yeah. Line that up with the pin. Got it up and down. Got it. This has to go. Okay, All right, stand by. Yeah, I can totally feel it. Boat turning. Oh, yeah. Drop the code zero, and I don't see any chase, so that's a good thing. Dies as soon as it comes out of the water. Alright, let me get back there. Okay. Fucker's hard, everybody. He's fighting. Yeah, he's fighting. Ooh, this thing's gonna crap all over the place. Oh, yeah, we'll do it. Oh, that's a tuna. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. Come on, come on. Other side, don't we don't lose them. Alright. Oh my god, <laughs> Hey Michelle, what are we eating? Fish. What kind of fish? La poisson. Uh, Pig jack, right? I think so, I don't know. George's How did we get fish. the fish? We caught the fish. Ooh, who caught the fish? Did you catch the fish, Dave? I did not. George, I, think. I didn't. All I did was notice it was on the line. And you played the fish. That's and right. I played it. That was fish. I mean, we all fish. caught it because whoever puts the line in, That's we true. just, you know, it's not like we're doing something special by putting the line in. Looks really good. Good morning, everyone, from the South Atlantic. Uh, we are slowly making our way towards St. Helena. This is our third day under passage. Yesterday was a phenomenal day. We had the best wind we had yet. We were cruising along a good 10 knots. Caught a fish, saw dolphins. Uh, but then last night, I screwed some things up to trying to change the wind angle, which required uh, the reefing of the main. Uh, trying to do too many things at once, should have just done them step by step. But the crew is good, sail is fine, boat is, boat is okay. Uh, and as you can see, that beautiful sunrise. So hopefully this day will bring us some awesome, wonderful things today as well. It's heavy. I gotta use my muscles. Oh my god, it's huge! What'd you say? It's huge! That's what she said! It is so big! And it's green! That is so pretty. Oh, I hope it's a mahi! And you guys didn't want to put this back out. Yeah! Within five minutes, there was another one. I know! Woo! It's heavy! Did it? Within five minutes, there was another one on the line. It's tiny. It looks good, though. It's really good. Where's the gap? Don't leave the gap. I've never Woo! done this before. Woo! So what do I do? I need a pressure, I know. Well, I 
will get you a cutting board. It's right here. Dexter. Well, I don't want to bring him out prematurely. No, I, yeah, I would, I would just, if he's gone through his dead throes, he's dead, leave him in there, let him bleed for 20 minutes, get all the blood out. She's trying to shake <laughs> Get to the last drop. What was that? Get the last drop. <laughs> I'm going to start bringing, <laughs> bringing him out. Uh, just, just let him be. Right, but he can't fall through can the crack. No. Yeah, you can let him go. Because he can't fall through the crack. No. You think he's good? I hope not. At this point, I hope he's dead. You never want to fall through the crack. <laughs> crack kills. I'm going to go too far. Fish lips. <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah, this is a mahi. It's totally a mahi based on the coloring. Because they lose their color the minute they come out of the water. That way. Eh. It's my boo boo finger. Muscles. Twist it, don't try to pop it. Okay, who's taking over? It's my boo boo. I, I chopped my finger You're part right. off. Shotzi's like, I like champagne. Yeah. Bless you. Thank you. That was a sneeze. I'm, I'm allergic to the lamb. <laughs> She's awful. It's all the trees and flora and fauna. Yeah, at some point we're going to be able to smell humans. Other than us. Cheers. All right. Land ho. Prost. Land ho. Land ho. Prost. Prost. Go for it. Ready? Keep your eye on the counter. Conversation. It's a time for action. <laughs> Our crew ditched us today. That was quite a shock. Uh, but, you know, they got to do what they do. And we didn't want to bring our dinghy down because it's too much work and we're not going to stay that long. So we're going to get on our pedal board. And if you recall, we've fallen off this thing before. And we're going to go over to CJ to meet up with a wonderful couple for dinner. What's the worst that could happen? We've already lost our crew. <laughs> Not only did our crew of three ditch us here in St. Helena, but they did not do all their laundry. So we had to do all their sheets and towels and clean up their side of the boat. And, um, you know, it's bad enough that you ditch us, but can you at least clean up after yourself? Thank you. 
<laughs> See you guys. And there's the ropes that you swing on. We've heard so much about this. Uh, oh, you haven't been ashore yet? No. Oh, oh, right. right. um, this morning. We had a slow roll on the last day. Yeah. Not during daylight. All right. arrived in St. Helena and we just cleared customs and immigration, got our fishing license and next thing we're going to do is climb Jacob's Ladder. Ah! We're going to be very sore after today. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Let's go. Oh my God, <laughs> we stopped about every 50 or 60 steps on the way up. I'm still winded, <laughs> we still have to go down. That was tough, very tough. Yeah, it's good though. Yeah, and we can't even get a certificate because the museum's closed. How lame mm. is that? <sighs> well, we earned our beer. We sure did. <laughs> Let's go find beer. Yes. But the emancipation was of the slaves in, in Britain was in 1833. So I don't know if you've read those things about America, etc. But at the end of the day, probably would have been better just not to have the independence because you know Canada's independent and they had the end of slavery way before the US. Right? So. Just checked out of St. Helena. We've been having trouble finding fresh produce. I did buy a bunch of frozen stuff and then I scored with these two fruits. They came in so fast, the person working at the register when I was checking out, she ran back and grabbed a couple for herself. And she's like, you're gonna wanna get these, they're really good. And I don't even remember what she said they are, but we're gonna try this out later. But look at this, I got lettuce, that's a big deal. I got eggplant and I got tomatoes. So, lettuce, eggplant, and tomatoes. One got a little beat up on the way. And of course, you gotta have a little bit of beer. That was one heavy bag. Uh, so now we're just waiting for the fuel truck. Supposedly we're next in line. They were supposed to be here at 8.30 to nine. It's noon now, so you know, island time. And so now we're off to Fernando, but Ascension will be our bailout. And the weather is kind of routing us toward Ascension. So I think we're gonna stop there if um, if it works out weather-wise, otherwise we're gonna beeline directly to Fernando. Does that mean we're full of shit or do we have a shitty crew? We have a shitty crew, we have a shitty crew, we have a shitty crew.